Colonel, I'm amazed that you were able to retrieve these documents so quickly. Thank you, sir, but I'm afraid the credit must go to Starling here. Thanks to him, Robson's top men are behind bars, and the file never did reach its final destination. Well, good job, Starling. Thank you, sir. I had my doubts when the Colonel first suggested you for this assignment. Using a 20-year-old agent isn't exactly standard operating procedure around here. Well, it doesn't matter how old you are, sir, only that you're good. What's this? The next assignment over there in Miami. Ah, sorry, Colonel. No can do. No? Vacation, remember? Well, you made a promise. Six weeks in Europe. London, Paris, Rome. Starling, this is important. Well, someone else can handle it, sir. There is no one else. Sorry, gentlemen. I'd like to help you out. But I can't. I'll see you in six weeks.
better. How about yourself? Yeah, you know, same as always, you know. Nothing ever changes with me. Ah, let's go. Come on. Come on, why don't you see my car? <laughs> so what have you been doing with yourself since school? Oh, I've been working for my uncle. Dull, real dull stuff. Yeah. Well, if you're looking for excitement, you're going to be disappointed. Nothing much ever happens around here. Big shots. Here we are, Professor. Thank you. Three-wheel Morgan, all right. Yep. I got it at an auction. What the heck? No, no, the car. I fixed it up myself. Ah, fix it up yourself. Ready, Professor? Welcome to London. I can hardly believe I am here. Without the help of your secret service, I would not be. For that, I thank you. Just doing our job, Professor? All the same, Mr. Bidley. Uh, Bidley. Oh. And nevertheless, I am very thankful. You have an interview with the Prime Minister tomorrow afternoon, but until then, we'll keep you under wraps. Wraps? What is wraps? Undercover. Out of danger. Safe. <laughs> you and your formula. Well, speaking of that, uh, do you have it with you? Don't you worry, Mr. Bidley. Uh, Diddley. No, you're right, Bidley. It is in a very safe place. <laughs> She must be at least 70 years old now. But she's really feisty, especially, especially when she gets up tight. Why? <laughs> You'll have to let us through. We're on official business. So are we. The professor comes with us. Stay there, and he'll live. Don't move. If you don't want anybody hurt, don't move. Stop here. Get him. Pass the gun. I do not want anybody hurt. I must go with him.
give him a warning. Are you all right? Get him. That ink. Come on. Tell them we've lost Grzynski. How am I going to explain this to Simmons? Everybody makes mistakes, sir.
The owner of the flower stand claims there's been extensive damage. No, I'll be happy to pay for it. No, I'll, I'll send them a check. I was, I was driving. Well, this time I'll let you go with a warning. But no more reckless driving. Or next time you'll end up in court. You can go. What about the old man that was kidnapped? What about him? Well, you are going to try and find him, aren't you? We've got your statements, uh, Starling. If we need any further assistance, we'll let you know. Right. Kidnapping. Did you ever hear anything so preposterous? Well, sir, they are Americans. Yes. No, they're not going to do anything. Well, they probably think we just made it up. And how are you this morning, Desdemona? My, but you're certainly looking lovely. Morning, Hamlet, dear. And Lydia? Well, hello. Come on. Oh, what a lovely flower you have. <laughs> Ooh, you're looking a little peak this morning, Ophelia. Hmm, I think what you need is more sunlight. Hello, Aunt Lydia. Oh, there you are, dear boy. Uh, Aunt Lydia, I'd like you you're to You're late, you know, Roger. I don't mean to scold you, but you do have an appointment with the dentist this afternoon. You're so forgetful, dear. No, Aunt Lydia, I had that appointment yesterday. Yesterday? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Well, where have you been all morning? Well, I've been at the airport, picking up my friend Luther. Who? Luther. Uh, uh, Luther Starling. He's my friend from America. He's here on vacation. From America? I, I told you about him weeks ago, Auntie. Oh, dear me. I suppose it must have slipped my mind. <laughs> I'm very pleased to meet you, Leonard. <laughs> no, it's Luther. Oh, yes, Luther. <laughs> Do you know, I once had a cat named Luther. <laughs> I'll only be in England for a week or so, and then I'm off to Paris. I see. Well, please feel free to, to come by as often as you please. Well, and Lydia, Luther's going to be staying in the guest room. The guest room? He's staying with us. Remember? With us? Oh, with us! Oh, well, in that case, he'll have to stay in the guest room. Come along. I'll show you where it is. Now, why didn't I think, think of, of that? Follow me. It's just down here. Well, here you are, Lawrence, and you're welcome to stay as long as you like. That's Luther, ma'am. Oh, yes, of course, Luther. How silly of me to have forgotten. <laughs> Do you know, I once had a cat named Luther. Oh, he was so sweet. He was ginger and white. He had great white whiskers. Here it is. Nice view. Hey, this is great. Come on. Come on, I'll show you my room. Hey, this is a terrific setup. What's all this stuff for? Well, electronics is still my hobby. Collecting old equipment, rigging it together. Look, I got all the phones tapped. I can record everything, make notes for Aunt Lydia. Otherwise, she'd forget everything. <laughs> I got a videotape system hooked into the burglar alarm. Now, if someone breaks in, it all goes on videotape, like a bank. I just keep adding to the system, except I'm starting to run out of room. What's that? It's a gold ring. I wonder where it came from. Why, isn't it yours? No. There's some engraving on it. Hey, hey, that's wild. Where'd you get that? 
Oh, uh, my uncle gave it to me. Huh? Kaplan. 48 Kings Road, apartment 6. So that, that's right here in London. I wonder where it came from. I think... The old man. What? The old man who was kidnapped. When I helped him up, he whispered something about a ring. Well, let's uh, take it to Scotland Yard. It'll prove we're telling the truth. No, an address on a ring doesn't prove anything, Raj. Well, what else can we do? We could go to the address ourselves. Uh, <laughs> if we find something, the police will have to believe us. Yeah, okay, what if we run into those guys with the machine guns? We make a quick exit and let the cops handle it. Well, I got some errands to run downtown. We'll check it out then. <laughs> Agent Bidley is here to see you, sir. Right, send him in. Sit down. I've been going through your report about the Brzezinski case. You've no idea where the professor is? No, sir. We do know that Omega was behind the kidnapping, sir. But that's all. What about the head of Omega, our old friend Minton? Any lead there? Not really, sir. He's somewhere in or around London, but we haven't been able to pinpoint him as yet. This entire operation has been bungled. How am I going to explain to the Prime Minister that we've allowed Professor Bluchinsky and the formula to be snatched from under our noses? What about the two young men? Well, there's not much to tell, sir. They were at the airport when we arrived, and apparently they followed us. Excuse me, sir. There's a message about the two boys on the telex. Oh, well, there's something interesting here. It appears that one of our young men is an agent for the American government. And you think there's a connection with the professor's kidnapping? I know the Americans would like the Bachinsky formula, but I can't see them kidnapping him from us. All the same, let's play safe and put him under 24-hour surveillance. Yes, sir. And there's just one more thing, sir. May I have another car? Another car? What on earth for? I'm afraid mine had a bit of a crash. You better sign it out of transportation, but please try and take it easy, Bidley, and remember that we are on budget cutbacks. Budget cutbacks, yes. We netted approximately two million pounds sterling from our narcotics section through our Hong Kong pipeline. An additional 500,000 pounds for ransom on the wife of Hua Zhang, the Chinese envoy in Tokyo. Total income for the fiscal year, Six million three hundred thousand pounds sterling. Excellent. I'm very pleased with your work as head of our Far East branch, Mr. G. Our final order of business is our proposed theft of the Mona Lisa from the Louvre in Paris. Our plans are going scheduled, and I feel confident. that the meeting is adjourned until after lunch. So this is the world-famous Professor Wyszynski. I am honored. Your reputation in the field of science precedes you. I demand to know why I am here. <laughs> Let us not play games, Professor. I've been paid a great deal of money by mutual friends of ours to obtain a certain formula. It appears that your former employers were rather, shall we say, perturbed at your sudden disappearance. I don't know what you're talking about. Why do you have to make things difficult? It would be so much easier if you were to cooperate. Very well. I do wish that you would reconsider.
Professor, this is Dr. Xavier Krauss. He's an expert in the use of truth drugs. Bushinsky, sir. I don't understand. The professor said he would come in person. Unfortunately, the professor was not able to come himself. Uh, he asked me to pick up the formula. The professor was most insistent that I give the formula to no one but him. That's been changed. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I cannot help you. What's the meaning of this? We want to know where that formula is. And you are going to tell us. Upstairs. Mr. Kaplan? Hey, I don't think he's home. Come on, maybe we should come back later. If he's not home, why did he leave his radio on? Where'd you get that? Uh, my uncle. What are you doing? You know, there's a law against this. There's a law against this, too. Is he dead? Unconscious. He's okay. Did you get the formula or not? Captain didn't have it, but it's been delivered by special messenger, 6.30 this evening, under the clock, Windsor Station. That complicates things. 
Kalenkov wants to take delivery this afternoon. Come on. After them. to your right? Right. Beautiful. <laughs> Ride into London. Sure, hop in. Remember, Pangford 7288. Right. And I get off work at 7. Bye. Check our story. Kathleen will verify everything we've told you.
Send my car around to the front. Yes? Scotland Yard, ma'am. We'd like to ask you a few questions. May we come in? Oh, my. Well, yes, I suppose you can. I hope I'm not in any trouble. We're investigating a report that someone was beaten up earlier this afternoon. Beaten up? Where? In flat six. Yeah. Oh, that flat's been empty for six weeks or more. It's not very easy to get a decent tent these days, you know. Well, I've been home all the afternoon, and there ain't no one been beaten up in this flat. What happened to Mr. Kaplan? Who? Mr. Kaplan, he was a thin man with a beard. No one like that lives here. I've got one gentleman who's hard of hearing. She's lying. Kaplan was on the floor unconscious. I looked out the window. There was two men going over the wall, and we followed them. You say you climbed out of that window there? That's right. Well, I don't see how. That window's been stuck for years. It won't budge. She's right, sir. It's stuck fast. Thank you for your time, ma'am. Sorry to have you. That window was open this afternoon. Of course it was. Inspector, a man was kidnapped. Can't you see this has all been staged? You two have had your fun. Now, if you don't mind, we've got work to do. Oh. Here's your ring. Shut the door on your way out, won't you, love? How you feeling, dearie? You must be crazy. No, the formula's important. They've already kidnapped one person to get it. I think we should just forget about it. No, we can't. Windsor Station at 6.30. Those guys are gonna be there. And they've got guns. I know. That's what this is for. What the heck is that? It's a razor gun. It fires knockout darts. You get that from your uncle, too? Right. Super slick jelly bearings. No way you can walk on them. What kind of business is your uncle in? It's Uncle Sam, Raj. I work for the U.S. government. Smoke bombs. All you do is twist the top. Just what kind of work do you do for the government? I work for an organization called Anatex. I never heard of it. Yeah, we take care of things involving national security. You mean you're some kind of secret agent? Right. Yeah, I was recruited for one assignment, and I've been working for them ever since. Are you here on some kind of assignment now? No, vacation, just like I told you. Only it looks like we're involved in this other thing, whether we like it or not. We? No, no, I really don't like it. Luther, these guys mean business. We could get killed. Raj, I know what I'm doing. I've dealt with these kind of people before. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. You keep saying don't worry. Luther, I'm worried. Don't worry.
get in. Hey, where are you going? Hang on. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes, I believe you have a package for me. That's him. I'll need to see some identification. Identification? Well, yes, sir, those are my instructions. Will this do? Follow me. in code. Without the key to the code, it's useless. We're right back where we started. Oh, there must be a clue in there somewhere. It's that guy from the airport. Kill you. How do you know my name? We know everything about you, including the fact that you work for the American government. Who are you? I'll show you my identification. It's British Secret Service. What's the British Secret Service interested in us for? We think you might have some information about Professor Buczynski. Who? Professor Alexis Buczynski. He was kidnapped this morning on the way from Heathrow Airport. The old man. He was a professor? He defected from a small East European country. He'd recently developed a very important energy formula. A formula which makes nuclear power obsolete. When he defected, he mailed the only existing copy of the formula to an address here in London. Who kidnapped him? An international crime organization called Omega. Now, the head of Omega is a man called Arthur Minton. We've been after him for years. He plans to sell the formula. And he must be prevented at all cost. Here's your formula. We uh, borrowed it from Minton's men. It won't do you any good, though. It's an unfamiliar code. You're right. We need the professor to translate this. I'm sorry we can't be more help. 
Better get this back to headquarters. Perhaps the code section can make something of it. Uh, if there's anything we can do, let us know. I think we can handle this from now on. In the meantime, however, we'll keep an eye on your house in case Minton gets in touch with you. Um, call this number any time of the day or night. Oscar Bidley. Right. Good night, then. Oh. Be in touch if there's anything else. <laughs> Get a match. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Here you are. You know, Peters, I was just thinking. making cars like they used to, sir. <laughs> but we did get the formula, sir. That's true enough. And have the decoding station made any sense of it? Not uh, yet, sir. So the only lead we have to Minton and the professor are those two young men. And if Minton finds out that the formula has been stolen, he'll probably try and get it back. You think he may try to contact them, sir? Exactly. And so you continue your surveillance, Bidley. But if Minton finds out they haven't got the formula, he... I try to kill them, sir. Well, that's a risk we'll have to take. Hey, Bidley? Yes, sir. Underscarter's orders. Underscarter's orders. Yes! Found the boy for our Scotland Yard informant. You have an address? Yes. Very well, you know what to do. Old Vogue, this time. Get it right. soup. How is it? It's great, but it's uh, tomato soup. Really? Hmm. I believe you're right. I always get those two mixed up. <laughs> hmm. By the way, Aunt Lydia, um, don't forget about your play rehearsal this afternoon. My what? Your play rehearsal for Romeo and Juliet. Mrs. Smith is picking you up at 3 o'clock. Yeah, me, I completely forgot. I got it. Hey, hello. Who? Luther, it's for you. Hello? Luther Starling. Speaking. Last night you stole something from us. We want it back. We'll trade you the professor for the formula. If you're interested, Come to the Montague Park by the tennis courts at 3.30. Don't contact the police or we'll be forced to kill the professor. One condition. We only deal with Minton. You're in no position to bargain. Neither are you. No Minton, no deal. I'll see what I can do. We only deal with Minton. You're in no position to bargain. Neither are you. I'll see what I can do. It might be a trap. I think we should just let Bidley's voice take care of it, Luther. We call the Secret Service. They kill Brzezinski. Yeah, but we don't even have the formula anymore. Then we'll have to come up with one, won't we? <laughs>
So it's you who've been causing me all this trouble. How interesting. Where is Professor Bijinsky? You want to get down to business, all right. Do you have the formula? In a safe place. Before telling you where the professor is, I want it. How do we know we can trust you? <laughs> you don't. But you have no choice. I trusted you. I came here. How was I to know that you weren't going to bring the authorities? Yeah, but we didn't. No, that's good. So if you'll hand over the formula, I'll turn over the professor. Now, Buzinski. <laughs> Amateurs should not try to match wits with professionals. Hey, come on. You gave us your word. My profession demands that my word be worthless. Please, don't let's have any trouble. Now what? A Vogue here will take you to a house in the country where you will stay until this thing is over. Gets, I'll uh, meet you on the venture. And Gets. Kill them. Kill us! Too fast. Throw something out.
Ah, uh, we're going down too fast. Uh, hang on. Well, I'm very sorry, madam. It's against the law to choose here. You nothing. Well, I never. Excuse me, we seem to be lost. Could you direct us to London, please? Of course. Oh, um... Uh, uh, follow me! Ah, yes. You go up there to the first roundabout and turn left. Thank you. Now, madam, as I was saying, you can't park here. Don't take me for a fool, Minton. What's wrong? This is not the formula. This is gibberish. What makes you so certain? This is chemical formula. Wojcicki's formula is a series of mathematical equations. And may I remind you that my government advanced a great deal of money for the return of our property. You don't have to remind me, Kalenkov. You shall have the real formula very soon. I'll give you 48 hours. Dog. Those boys still have the real formula. We shall have to find some bait. What a nasty bunch you are. Who are you? My name is Arthur Minton, Miss Potter. Minton? Minton. I don't believe I know that name. We've never met. Well, what am I doing here? I must apologize for the inconvenience, but um, due to reasons that I cannot tell you, it is necessary for you to stay with us a while. Am I being kidnapped? I'm afraid so. Will I be sold into slavery? Uh, I don't think that will be necessary. <laughs> well, I suppose I'd better just sit back and enjoy myself. <laughs> oh, do you have the time? It's nearly half past four. Why? I never miss tea. You do serve tea, don't you? Must still be at her play rehearsal. Oh my, hungry. Did Aunt Lydia rearrange the furniture in the parlor this afternoon? No, I don't think so. Yeah, her chair was missing. Oh yeah? Didn't notice. Here. Help yourself. Hello? This is Arthur Minton. There's someone here who'd like to speak to you. Roger, is that you? I, I hope you won't be too cross with me, but I seem to have been kidnapped. And Lydia! For the time being, she's quite safe. Whether or not she remains that way is up to you and your friend. Are you listening? Y yeah. I'll trade your aunt's life for the real formula at 5.30 this afternoon in Trafalgar Square. Any tricks on your part or any attempt to contact the authorities will result
result in her death. What's wrong? They got Aunt Lydia. Any tricks on your part, or any attempt to contact the authorities, will result in her death. Play that last part again and turn up the volume. To contact the authorities will result in her death. Hear that? It sounds like a boat whistle. Well, there's boats all up and down the Thames. The whistle doesn't tell us anything. Wait a minute. When we were at Montague Park, Minton said, meet me on the Venture, remember? A ship, right? Give me the number of the Port Authority, please. Then my fourth husband, Jordan, died. Or was it Jeffrey? Oh, I always get them mixed up. Such a dear fellow, so terribly devoted to me. Why, he literally worshipped the ground I walked on. Lady, don't you ever shut up. I beg your pardon. You've been talking for nearly an hour. I'm afraid our captors don't have very good manners. Yeah, criminals seldom do have. Yes? Right. Thank you. There's only one venture in port, the Marcon Venture. It's docked at Pier 12 and it sails at 6 p.m. for North Africa. And Lydia must be on board. Face me, that's all. We'll uh, wait in the car. They've got to come out sometime. Uh, the back door is covered, right? Yes, sir. Well, what do we do now? If we make a move, they'll follow us. We need some kind of a disguise. Hold this up. What for? Hmm. It's a little small, but it should fit. <laughs> no. There's no way you're gonna get me into this dress. Those weren't old ladies, that's the boys. Professor Bullfinchy. Uh, Bullfinchy. Oh, yes. Uh, do you think they'll kill us? I, uh, I wouldn't worry if I were you. Oh, I'm not worried for myself. It's just my poor nephew, Roger. 
something happens to me, he'll have no one to take care of him. He's a very nice boy, but frightfully absent-minded. I always have to remind him of things. I'm quite sure that the police will soon find us and rescue us. It is purely a matter of time. Lydia's on that thing. There's only one way to make sure. We've got to get aboard. Right. Your wife will be dreadfully worried about you. I am not married, uh, Mrs. Potter. Really? Oh, how interesting. Oh, and do call me Lydia. After all, people involved in a kidnapping should be on a first name basis, don't you think? I absolutely agree. Uh, Lydia. How are our guests doing? The old woman talks too much. <laughs> we leave at 5.30, be back around 6, with two more passengers. Some problems are better disposed of at sea. Tell the captain to be ready to get underway. This is 
four. Mr. Minton wants a ship ready to get underway at six o'clock. Right, sir. and I haven't been given anything to eat. I'm hungry. What's the matter? Don't you feed people on this boat? She's in there, all right. Yeah, but how do we get her out? You go ashore and call Bidley. Here's his card. Tell him to get here at exactly 5.30. Okay. Then call MacGuffin at Scotland Yard. Make up some sort of an excuse to get him here at the same time. He's never gonna believe me. Well, you have to disguise your voice. You just hold this up to your throat and speak normally. That thing is wild. Hello, MacGuffin. <laughs> hey, good luck. Yeah. In here. I thought you might be wanting to know. There's a band of thieves smuggling dynamite into the country to blow up the Bank of England. It's on the freighter, Mark on Venture, docked at Pier 12. If you want to catch him, be there at 5.30, sharp. Who is this? It's a friend. Just a friend. Evening, Mr. Tinker. Everything quiet? Aye, Captain. As agreed. What the places was that? Captain, where below? Sounds out loud. What's going on? Fire! Is anyone out there? No answer on the bridge. You better go up and find out what's going on. I'll stay here. Yeah? There's a fire in the engine room. Mr. Minton wants the prisoners up on deck. Thank <laughs> you. 
sold. Ridley, McGuffin, what's the Secret Service doing here? What's Gilton Yard doing here? What? What the do? <laughs> Mr. Bidley, you're just the man I was looking for. I believe you know Professor Buzinski. Professor Buzinski. 
Professor Buczynski, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Bernard Simmons, British Secret Service. Welcome to England. I am very glad to meet you, Mr. Simmons. Darling, you've got some explaining to do. Yeah, sure, but don't you think you should arrest our friend Minton before he gets away? Arrest that man! Five, sir. Mr. Minton? We've well, got you this time. Minton? You don't mean Arthur Minton. That's right. Scotland Yard's been trying to get their hands on you for a long time, Minton. There's a small matter of gold smuggling we'd like to ask you about. Bring him along. My one mistake was in underestimating you. Amateurs should never try matching wits with professionals. Sorry to see you go, Ludwig. Things will seem awfully dull around here now, I'm afraid. <laughs> I can't remember when I've had so much fun. <laughs> I'm afraid we have to run. The professor is taking me to the Bolshoi Ballet. Please, call me Alexis. After all, people who have shared a kidnapping should be on a first name's basis. Alexis? Oh, what a lovely name. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I once had a parrot called Alexis. <laughs> Well, good luck, Luther. Thank you, sir. I don't know how Her Majesty's Secret Service is going to get along without you. But well, we're certainly going to try. Excuse me, sir. Your new car is here. Uh, there, there must be, must be some, some mistake. Uh... No, sir. Mr. Simmons says he hopes this one lasts more than one day. Yourself, hey, thank you for the jacket. Oh. oh. That's better. We have a little problem, and we were hoping that uh, perhaps... Uh, I'm could... Sorry, I'm on vacation. But, uh, wait a minute, listen. Um, you see, we've been working on that case for the past six months. It's uh, uh, smuggling in the south of France. You see, that you're smuggling? Perhaps... Yes. Yes, oh, we know they are smuggling, but uh, we can't prove it. Oh, we've been trying everything, but we are getting nowhere. So they are Americans. They are very smart. And that's why we thought of you. Why couldn't you come down and help us for a few days? We believe that the contraband originates on the Isle of Crete and is then brought into France either through Marseille or Nice. 